Hello students, in this video we'll discuss how to compute double integrals over non-rectangular regions and change limits of integration. Let's consider, we'll do this for several examples, consider the region R, which is the set of points X and Y, such that X is between negative 1 and 1, or let's do it like this, let's say that Y is between 0 and 1, so negative 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1, x between negative 1 and 1, and y is bigger than x squared and less than 1. So let's figure out what this region looks like. So this region R looks like this. So my x is between 1 and negative 1. And my y is between this parabola, so let's draw that parabola. That's the parabola y equals x squared. Fill it in if we want. And of course when I plug in either 1 or negative 1 to this parabola y equals x squared, we get to the point 1. So y starts on this parabola and goes up to y equals 1. Well, y equals 1 is this straight line over here. So it looks like this region r is the region inside this parabola. So that's my region r. Now, if we were to compute an integral over r, say, for example, we wanted to find the double integral over r of just, say, a simple function like y dA. Well, we could do an iterated integral. We could say that x goes between negative 1 and 1. And y goes between what? y goes between x squared and 1. Now I'm not integrating over a rectangle, I'm integrating over this region r, which is this parabolic region. My limits of integration are no longer constants, they involve functions of x. I'm going to integrate a y, then I'm going to do a y limit, then an x limit, because the y limits are allowed now to depend on x. And we can compute this. We can say that this is equal to the integral from negative 1 to 1. I integrate y, so I'll get y squared over 2, evaluated from 1 down to x squared dx. And remember, these are values of y. That's a value of y. That's a value of y. So what this is equal to is this is equal to the integral from negative 1 to 1. When I plug in y equals 1, I'm going to get a 1 half minus x squared squared. So I'll have an x to the fourth over 2 dx. And so this will be a 1 half, the integral from negative 1 to 1 of 1 minus 4x squared dx. Now this function 1 minus 4x to the fourth power is an even function, so I can write this as 1 half times 2, the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus x to the fourth dx, and those the 2 and the 1 half cancel out. And so if I integrate this, I'll just get an x minus x to the fifth over 5 from 0 to 1, so that'll be 1 minus a fifth, 1 minus 1 fifth, which is 4 fifths. So my integral over here is 4 fifths. Now, there's an alternative way of doing this problem. Instead of doing a dy dx, according to Fubini's theorem, I should be able to do a dx dy. So I need to write this region r, when this, so this is frequently called a type 1 region because the y, for these type 1 regions, y is allowed to go between two functions of x. Now, I can write this region r in a different way. I can say in this region y goes between 0 and 1. That's the range of y in this region. So I claim to that y is, r is also equal to the set of points x and y, such that y is between 0 and 1. And where does x go between? Well, this parabola can also be written as two functions of y. This tells me that x is equal to plus or minus root y. This branch over here corresponds to what? That corresponds to x being equal to positive root y. And this branch over here, that second branch over there, that, dot, that dashed line, corresponds to x being negative square root y, because over here the x is negative. That's on the negative x-axis. So I can say now that x is between negative root y and positive root y. And that's an alternate way of writing down my region. Now, let's do the double integral. The double integral over r of this function y dA will be the integral. Well, now y goes between 0 and 1, and x goes between what? x goes between negative square root y and square root y. Then I have a y dx dy, and now 
With respect to x, that's very easy to integrate. Integral from 0 to 1. I'll have an x times y, because there's no x here, just turns into an x times y. And then I will have x going from negative root y to x goes to positive root y. Then we'll have a dy. So this will be what? This is going to be the integral from 0 to 1. I'm going to have a what? x is root y, so this will be a y to the 1 half times y is going to be y to the 3 halves y to the 3 halves, and then I'm going to have a minus, minus y to the 3 halves, dy. And so all total what I have here is I have 2 times y to the 3 halves. So this will be 2, the integral from 0 to 1, of y to the 3 halves power, dy. And that's going to be 2, then I'm going to raise the power, so it's going to be y to the 5 halves power, divide by 5 halves y goes between 0 and 1. And so I'll get is I'll get a, when y is equal to 0, there's no limits down here, so I'm going to get a 2 times 1 over 5 halves, which is 2 times 2 over 5, which is 4 over 5. And lo and behold, I get exactly the same answer if I do the dy dx integral or the dx dy integral. So this region over here, when you have x between two functions of y, is called a type 2 region. So with these more general regions, when you have a non-rectangular region, oftentimes it's useful to write it either as a type 1 region or a type 2 region if possible. So, and then what, what happens is you'll get two very different types of integrations that you're doing over here, as we can see. This first integration is fairly simple. There's only polynomials, and these things over here involve square roots, but they'll both give you the same answer. So it's a little bit of an art craft or an art form deciding which way you're going to do. Are you going to do a dy dx, or are you going to do a dx dy? Both will give you the right answer. Sometimes it's impossible to do the integral one way, and you must do it the other way. But it's a good pattern to get into trying to write the region r as a type 1 or a type 2 region to figure out which integral you prefer to do. Thank you very much.